Hello friends, today I want to talk about the Asbury revival that's been um, shared all over across social media, the coverage coming out from this chapel and um, I was just about to get the video footages of the prayer revival or the Asbury revival and then I came across this thing here, so this is a video that has been uploaded about six hours ago and apparently a revival has hit Australia fire church Sushine or is that meant to say Sunshine Coast huh basically all right let me turn that down I have a scripture basically oh, there's something I want to share with you about this and we're going to go to the book of Matthew in Matthew chapter 13 and um, I asked the Lord myself personally before looking into any footages or any articles I mean I've got a gist of the concern that fellow believers have about this but I also have been hearing a lot of testimonials that are coming out from this revival in Asbury so my prayer was basically to ask the Lord what's going on is this of him and let me just say I believe the Lord is working amongst the youth I don't know everything I don't know all the ins and outs I don't know who's been affiliated to this movement who's associated with it I heard rumors about Todd Bentley trying to get a bit of the limelight but apparently he was refused and media in general have been refused doing coverage on the Asbury revival because they're trying to keep it a little private I don't know what I do know is this there's a particular portion of the scripture in Matthew's gospel chapter 13 where the Lord Jesus gives us a wonderful parable in fact this whole chapter he speaks of various parables let's read from verse 10 I think it's important to get a scriptural perspective on this situation because a lot of people are very concerned at the same time a lot of people are being blessed so where do we stand friends of the living God what we have to do is discern right but I think it's important to remind ourselves well what would the Lord say about this particular event well I believe he's already given us a very clear indication how he sees it this is my opinion I think we have to be very careful you know we've got to be so careful you guys and I understand again the concerns because of all the NAR the new as a apostolic reformation movement Bethel Church and the likes of Todd Bentley Todd White and what have you there's a lot of concern in the church I totally get it I myself am really extremely cautious but I think we should go back to the Bible. Let's seriously consider these words. We're going to read probably the entire gospel here. Bear with me. Look and, look and ask yourself, what is the Lord saying here? Where's his heart at? Remember, he's the shepherd. He's the good shepherd. He's always seeking his lost sheep. Yes? He knows what he's doing, you guys. He knows how to find his lost sheep and bring them home. He knows how to do it he knows where they are what their needs are what their hurts are and what bondages people are entangled in he knows how to deliver and set free his sheep so let's read <clears throat> the purpose of parables and the disciples came and said to him why do you speak to them in parables he answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has, to him more will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, 
and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. I want us to read on until we get to the part where the Lord speaks to us about the wheat and the tares. And there's a couple of very important lessons we can take from this. For the hearts of these people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Marvellous! The witnesses at the time of the Lord Jesus Christ's presence on earth. Remarkable. But he remember he said that blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. Right? That counts us in. Right? <clears throat> For assuredly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it. And to hear what you hear and did not hear it. The parable of the sower explained. Let's read this beautiful portion, friends. We want to get understanding. What's our perspective? What should we do? We want to be right. We want to do the right thing. We want to be considered righteous and use fair, righteous judgment, discernment, yes? <clears throat> we don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater, for example. We want to be careful, yeah? I do. And I'm sure you do as well. Therefore hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who received, <clears throat> excuse me, now he who received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who received seed on good ground is he who hears the word, understands it who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold some sixty some thirty wonderful so is it possible amongst this movement the people that are there there are various kinds of grounds the seed is the same the grounds are different the foundation and where this the seed falls right of course it's possible yes okay Bearing that in mind, it's possible also that some of them will receive the seed on good ground. Clearly, not all of them, but some will, who will understand and who will go to bear fruit. And this is what we need to see. In the days ahead, in the next coming weeks and months and years, will indeed be able to understand what was the fruit, what was the outcome of this movement, right? So that's one parable, but let us move on now to very interesting details given to us here in this scripture that the Lord Jesus relays to all that would hear. The parable of the wheat and the tears, and also remember, the Lord Jesus received everything he was saying from the Father, yeah, the Father, the Father's will is what the Lord Jesus came to fulfill. It pleased him to obey the Father. So what the Lord is saying here is directly from the Father, okay? Another parable he put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. Now think of it this way. This revival and so many others in, in times past, right? <clears throat> the good, the bad and the ugly. 
This is the perfect scripture, the perfect parable for us to consider when such events or movements or revivals happen. The perfect scripture. That's what I think. Why? Because the response that we are responsible to give can be found in this scripture. So the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, this is key, but when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tears also appeared. Basically, I don't think we're going to know immediately the ramifications of this revival and any other revival, any other movement of God across the world where people are concerned or have caution in their hearts until the grains have sprouted and they begin to produce. Then the tears also appeared, right? Interestingly, the servants recognized the difference. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tears? Very good question, right? The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. The seed was good. The field was good. The motive was good. The intention was good, but something went wrong. The enemy crept in while men slept and sowed the tears among the wheat, right? So the servants asked the owner, did you not sow good seed? Then how come it's got tears in it? And he said to them, an enemy has done this. Obviously, the sower knows. He knows everything. So he knows where the tears came from. He knows who's responsible. An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? Do you want us to go and take them out, Lord? We've identified the tears. We can see they're present in the field where the good seed was sown. We ought to take them out, ought we not? What do you say? But he said, no, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, don't, because his concern is for his wheat, his tender sheep. He has sheep and lamb out there, you guys who are very tender, it's taking them a long time to come into the house of God, to be amongst fellow believers, to be with fellowship inside of a church. Now, the Lord is saying, and we can consider this scripture and apply it across the board, honestly, across the kingdom. This is a parable about the kingdom, is it not? Yeah? So the servants are very eager to go and pick them out, the tears, gather them up, because they're servants of the sower. But the Lord says, no, lest while you gather up the tears, you also uproot the wheat with them. You disrupt the good work, the good seed that was sown in the wheat, amongst the wheat. There's a good work that has begun and it hasn't been completed yet. There's a chance, you guys, there's a good chance, there's a risk, I would say, that we could disrupt, even destroy the good work that the Lord has begun to do amongst his wheat. I'm not talking about the tears, but amongst the wheat, very tender. Verse 30, let both grow together. Does anybody want to argue with this scripture? Do you have the boldness, the audacity to come against the very words of Jesus Christ. 
When Paul, St. Paul, wrote letters to the churches and he called out deception, he called out the self-righteous folk, those who were preaching another Jesus, he was commissioned by the Lord Jesus to do what he did and to say what he said and to write what he wrote. We, you and I, we're not Paul, right? <laughs> I know some people like to think they are. But let's not forget our place. Our place is to love one another, to be cautious, to be vigilant, yes. We are not naive. We understand our enemy's devices, his tactics, and we are not ignorant. But when it comes to the wheat, we've got to be so careful because the Lord is doing something somewhere. None of what's happening in the world where these gatherings happen in the name of the Lord, none of it goes to waste you guys there's a lot of damage that the enemy does when he comes in no doubt but there's also good that happens and the lord does not want his wheat uprooted with the tears very important let's read on the lord says let both grow together until the harvest when is that that's at the very end of time hmm and at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. We have to allow the process to reach maturity. We've got to. As a gardener, I like gardening. I've got to allow patience and just sit back and know by faith I've sowed good seed. I expect that the good seed will come forth, sprout, and I'll reap of good fruit, right? But I'm not naive. I know that the weeds will come up. Depends what the weeds are like. Are they going to interfere with the good crop, with the good fruit? You see, there's a balance. You know what I'm saying? I believe the scriptures, the word of God, has the right word for us to respond to certain things when we see it happen that's still going on so this was in australia right oh somebody here leaving a testimonial here what's going what's he saying it's 23 minutes I'm out here at Asbury University. Uh, just got out of the revival. Um, and uh, I'm going to wait for a little bit just for you guys to get on because this is a much needed, it's, much, it's controversy, but it's also a much needed insight. I always felt led to, to speak with someone. So I'm just going to wait for a, at least like 10 minutes. In the comments there, I can see somebody saying, celebrity is not needed. This is God and his children. If celebrity wants to be there, then don't be a celebrity while you are there. I'm slow to speak. I don't judge anything or anyone prematurely, and we ought not to. Wise young man speaking here. God is holy. Much love to the people in Kentucky. Uh, Brother Doug, what's up, man? Um. Anyway. <clears throat> if people want to go online and, and watch the videos so that are coming out on social media, they're Sorry. skeptical. And just to name oh, the name, on. because it's already out there, the name was Todd Bentley. Okay, and let's he said, listen. He showed me the tweet of Todd Bentley. He showed me the tweet where Todd Bentley had tweeted and he said, um, I, he said, I'm, uh, I'm literally getting, um, baptized right now or I, or the baptism of the spirit i guess he was in the shower or something i briefly read it but he basically taught bentley had came here and the holy spirit dealt with him and i guess back in the hotel room or at his house wherever he's at he had uh received um the holy spirit had had come upon him and uh he had received some sort of deliverance i seen the whole todd bentley thing and my my initial response folks was he needs to be here he needs this. He needs this. Your Todd Whites, your Creflos, your uh, your 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 Joel Osteens, all of these people need this because Jesus is here. They need this. They don't need the mic, but.
but they need to come. All the people that people are saying they shouldn't be here, these are people that need to be here because it's not about them. And the Lord is humbling them through this small little university where many of them are trying to get in to speak and they're saying no. And I'm pretty sure there's pressure from the top. I'm pretty sure there's pressure from all types of places. And this is why the man said to me, please pray for our dean and continue to pray for us. But this is the thing, I told the man, I said, listen, I know this is real, so I don't want you to think that I don't think this is real. I said, I felt it in my, in my, in my bathroom when I was watching it from Atlanta and I was repenting. That was the first thing that, that came upon my, uh, my, my heart was, was, was tears and repenting. That's the first thing. And I told, spoke with another brother today. He said, man, when I saw your video, like I started repenting, I started fasting. And that's the same exact thing that happened to me before I even got here. And to be honest with you, you can ask my wife, I was distraught because I wasn't here. I was distraught. My wife said, you look way better now that you're here. Do you feel better? You're good? Because I was literally laying on the couch. Like, and like I was hungry for something that, and I wasn't being fed. And she was like, let's just go to Kentucky. Okay. So there's a lot of testimonials like this coming out, friends. And we've got to be careful. You know what I'm saying? We have to be very careful. Let me um, turn the mic around. Okay. Is that better? Where were we? So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tears? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. It's possible the enemy right now is trying to infiltrate a move that the Holy Spirit is, is the present, is a part of, is um, leading. It's very possible, you guys. And it's also possible that this isn't of the Lord. But I just want us to be very careful before we put out judgment and condemnation. You know, the Lord wants us to have a clean conscience, a pure heart when we approach the Father. Because the blood of Jesus sanctifies us. It cleanses our conscience from dead work so we can approach him without fear, without guilt, without shame. Because the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has dealt with it all. So we have to be so careful like children and approach our father. Now, if there are any people out there who are condemning his children, I don't think the Lord is going to look upon it lightly. That's why I'm saying be very careful. Be cautious, you know. Let us read. Let us read on what the Lord says here. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. That kid was saying, that young man, that he experienced repentance. And I'm hearing a lot about that. Now, there are other people saying about these other celebrity personalities that were trying to get in. And I think they've just thrown a spanner in the works. The attention has now gone on to these people. Well, how can it be? If they were there, I have a cause for concern. If there's an association with Todd Bentley or Todd White's or whoever, then that can't be good, can it? You know, and I just sense the spirit of the Pharisees when I hear that kind of thing. I'm so sorry to say that. Some of you, my listeners, are probably of that mind. You've seen this movement, you've heard about it, and you're like, oh, come on, this isn't real. God doesn't move this way. And we all have our opinions, right? Be careful. The mustard seed. You know, the funny thing is, you, when we read this, it seems as though the parable has ended but it comes back the lord elaborates so stay with me the mustard seed right so the lord just said at the end with the harvest comes the reapers are commanded to gather the tares bind them in bundles to burn them but to gather the wheat into his barn right then he says another parable he put forth to them saying the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it's grown, it's greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. 
The parable of the leaven. Another parable he spoke to them. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal until it was all leavened. Prophecy and the parables. All these things Jesus spoke to the multitude in parables, and without a parable he did not speak to them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things kept secret from the foundation of the world. Are we able to understand what he's saying? Are we? Because he's clearly saying some are able to understand and some are not. So he elaborates. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. His disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the tears of the field. Even they were intrigued. Because if you identify there's a problem in the field, the crop has the potential of being damaged. We've seen the tears. We need to uproot them, right? Yeah? Yeah? But the Lord says, no, do no such thing. Let them grow up together. He answered and said to them, he who sows a good seed is the son of man. Hallelujah. The son of man is sowing the good seed. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. Don't you just love that the Lord is giving us the interpretation? So we can't reinterpret it. (laughs) The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. So earlier on, when the servants recognised the tears, those servants were the angels. That's telling me only the angels are able to recognise the difference between the wheat and the tears. Did you get that? Only the angels are able to discern exactly Who's a son of righteousness and who's a son of the wicked one? Because they, they live in the spirit world, the spiritual dimension, the spiritual realm. And some of us thinking we have so much discernment that we can just look at somebody on the exterior and judge them. Like, a, like the saying goes, judging a book by its cover. Be careful, you guys. Therefore, as the tears are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of of this age the son of man will send out his angels so we need to respect the office of the angels because they've got certain duties and responsibilities given to them by the son of man so we need to stay in our lane and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire if there are those in these in these movements the sons of the wicked ones the wicked one and if they are practicing and offending <clears throat> doing lawlessness then be sure that the lord knows the son of man is aware he will cast them into the furnace of fire there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth but this is all going to happen at the end of the age we're hardly there are we friends there's a lot more to happen before we come to this time in human history when this age will be over we're not there yet so let's reserve our judgment for a moment there will be wailing Excuse me, there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth, then the righteous will shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid, and for joy over it he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. The pearl of great price. 
Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and found it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind. Look at this, amazing! And gathered some of every kind, which is us, is the human race, which when it was full, they drew to shore and they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, the fish, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. You see, at the end of the age, the separation will occur. The goats and the sheep, the wheat and the tares. The angels will come forth. Who? Who's going to come forth? Whose responsibility is it to separate the wheat from the, from the tares? You know, I hear people say, oh, this is just a separation of the wheat and the tares. I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I know it sounds as though you have discernment when you say that. Oh, it's just the wheat and the tares being divided. No, no, no. The division happens at the end of the age and it's the angel's responsibility to do it. And what's the primary focus? Where's the Lord's heart at? His wheat, his sheep. He does not want them to be uprooted at the time of the tears being uprooted because this division, the, the violence that is caused amongst the sheep is very disruptive. In fact, it can last a generation for some people to get over it, ruining their salvation. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth, very serious. Jesus said to them, have you understood all these things? And I say, like the Lord, have we understood all these things? They said to him, yes, Lord. Then he said to them, Therefore every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure things new and old. Wonderful. That's all I want to say about this movement, friends. Be careful. Be very careful. Because the Lord doesn't want his wheat to be uprooted let me leave you with that last verse but he said no lest while you gather up the tears you also uproot the wheat that's my perspective this is my response to this Asbury revival and any other revival that's happening in the world I'll be watching observing from a distance and praying for the wheat that is there pray for them Pray for the wheat that the Lord who has begun a good work will complete it and he's able to do that. Okay, friends, I'll be back again soon. I just thought it was important to put this message out there. And um, yeah, by all means, check out the videos if you want and uh, make your own conclusions. But can we just be mindful what this scripture says? Just to bring it up again, that was Matthew chapter 13 read all of it we virtually read the whole book there the whole gospel i love you and i will be back again soon jesus christ is lord to him belongs the glory